What's going on YouTube? Welcome to another video. I'm trying to like hide my messy bed behind me. I just moved and I am still unpacking so my place is not fully super like unpacked or clean. Um, I guess maybe I'll do a, a tour when it's like all unpacked. It's just a studio, so there's not much to like show you guys, but I, I have a feeling a lot of people are gonna ask, so I may do that. But anyways, you guys are propped in my cabinet right now. Um, I just wanted to pop in. I don't know exactly what this video is gonna entail, but it is a Saturday. Um, I woke up, I worked a demo for Rain Energy. Um, I just did some gym drop-offs drop -offs where I drove around the area and dropped off some cases. Got done a little early with that. Got done around like 12.30 and now it is, I think it, yeah, it's two and I just ate my pre-workout meal and I did my cardio actually right after I got home on my Peloton. Just ate my pre-workout meal and then I am um, getting ready to walk to the gym. I live like half a mile from the gym. Um, so I am gonna walk there and I will see you guys in the next clip and I hope you enjoy this video. One of the things I love about my new place, I have a nice mirror I can practice posing in. So please disregard the mess behind me. It will be cleaned, but off to the gym and I will see you guys when I get there. awkward moment when it is raining after you leave the gym and you do not bring a raincoat or an umbrella. We are just going to wing it and hope that it doesn't start pouring even harder. All right, so, so far it's not pouring on me. It is definitely a little bit more than a sprinkle, but I'm going to pick up the pace. I can kind of see my building, so uh, I'll update you guys when I arrive alive. Oh, there was lightning and there's thunder. I'll uh, update you guys when I arrive. All right, update. I did make it back. Oh my gosh, you can hear that. It's really, really storming out there. So I did not time my gym trip accordingly, but when you live in Florida, it practically rains every day in the summer. But the good news is I made it back. I'm in like the freight elevator area of my apartment. So I'm gonna go inside go to my place because my mom is supposed to be here in a little while. So I gotta clean for her. I have a caramel rice cake in my hand. Don't mind me. Um, and I will catch you guys in the next clip, whatever it may be. All right, really random review really quickly, but this is the new PE Science Cookies and Cream. And when I say new, this has been a flavor on their like menu for a really long time. However, they just redid like the formula, the recipe for this. So this is the new and improved Cookies and Cream flavor. The old Cookies and Cream is actually one of the ones I never tried. Um, I think it was like the only flavor I never tried because I've never been like a huge Cookies and Cream person, but I am here to tell you guys, full disclosure, this is not sponsored that this flavor is really awesome um, it doesn't have Oreo pieces in it but not sure how well you can see that it kind of looks like vanilla bean because it looks like there's like the vanilla bean little speckles in there but that's what it looks like this is perfect if you want to make protein fluff protein pudding or just even you know whip it with Greek yogurt or just enjoy it by a shake or with a shake um, or just with water or almond milk, but it is really good. I would definitely say it is worth getting. Um, probably not like my top flavor from them. I still love the peanut butter cookie and cake pop the best, but this is a very, very good flavor. All right, so real quick, those of you who know me and who have followed me long enough on Instagram may know what I'm about to say, but I haven't posted about it in a while. Um, but one of the things, well, obviously you guys know I'm really obsessed with peanut butter. Love peanut butter, especially folk and nuts, but one of the things I do to kind of curb my sweet tooth is I will freeze nut butter and my freezer, um, you know, isn't set at like the coldest temperature. I think it's in the middle ground, but what I'll do is I'll freeze my jars of nut butter. And then when I have a sweet tooth, 
having like a half a serving or a serving of my nut butter, it tastes like fudge and it's it's so good. And it really helps me with my sweet tooth and I've been doing it um, a lot during prep. I'll either have, you know, nut butter with rice cakes or honestly, I'll just have it straight out of the freezer on its own. So that's just a little hack for you guys. Hey friends, okay, so in these next couple of clips, sorry, the sun is catching my face very oddly right now. In these next couple of clips, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of tips for taking progress pictures. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves is bad progress pictures, and it's truly not that hard to take good ones. There's just a couple of tips, um, especially when it comes to lighting. That's the big thing, and that's what I'm gonna show you in these next couple of clips, how lighting plays such a big role in taking progress pictures. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a couple of different examples. Like right now, for example, I have a natural light source like right in front of me. I'm looking at my windows. That's why the lighting is so good. Now, if I turn around and I have the window behind me, as you can see, the lighting changes so much. This is what you don't want in your progress pictures. So hold tight. Um, in the next couple of clips, I'm going to show you guys a couple of examples of what not to do and also what to do. All right. So this is exhibit A. This is the ideal situation that you wanna be in to take progress pictures. I am staring straight on to my window. As you can see, you can see the physique pretty well. I don't have my, my heels on, but as you can see, the natural lighting does the body well. Now, example two, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna have the window behind me. Another disclaimer is, obviously, I live alone. I take my own progress pictures. What do I do? I prop up my phone on something sturdy, I put a video on, I put the front camera on, and I screenshot my progress pictures from that. So just a little tip for you guys who are taking your own progress pictures. All right, exhibit B, I have the window behind me, so the natural lighting is behind me. Obviously, you guys can see if I try to take a progress picture like this, like my skin looks super washed out. If you send a progress picture to your coach in this type of lighting, you might as well just send a picture of like nothing because this is not helpful whatsoever. So please do not take your progress pictures with the natural lighting behind you. If you have windows like on every side of your house, which I don't think, I mean, there are people that I know have that, try and at least like find a room where that isn't apparent or at least shut the blinds on one side. But yes, guys, this, this lighting, big X, big no. All right, the third and final little lighting situation we have going on here. I have the window to the side of me. I have no windows to the side of me. As you can tell, you know, if I were to pose, the lighting isn't awful. It's not awful, but it's still not as good as it was when I showed you guys the first time when I was actually staring at the natural light. So this is like 50% okay, still probably not acceptable to send to your coach, but it's better than the last thing I just showed you guys. So mental notes to make here, if you're taking progress pictures, always make sure you have a natural light source in front of you. Make sure it's never behind you. In front of you is gonna be the gold standard. Um, if you can't take progress pictures in daylight, consider investing in a um, ring light. Another big thing that I will tell you guys is you're gonna notice I, I have a lot of natural lighting in my apartment, but I don't have any lights turned on. I would highly, highly suggest not turning in your indoor lights um, because it's going to kind of make the tone of your skin a little orange. So pay attention to that as well. But I hope these tips were helpful, especially if you're a client of mine. I hope you made some mental notes here. Um, and again, you guys don't have to have anybody, you know, around to take your progress pictures. Like I live alone. I use the front camera. I prop my phone up. Like, trust me, don't take mirror pics either. That's another thing that you don't want to do. Don't take your picture in a mirror or like half of your body in your bathroom mirror. You guys just have to just prop your phone up on like, I have you guys propped up on a blender bottle. Um, prop your phone up, turn on a video and just screenshot your progress pictures from there. All right, so I'm about to show you guys what I'm going to experiment with for the first time. It is this Power XL air fryer grill. I haven't really found where I want to keep it in my kitchen because I don't have a lot of counter space. So I'll probably have to get like a little roller cart makeshift island to put it on. But I'm going to try this out. Um, I'm actually going to try chicken in it. Funny story, I'm a little afraid to use my oven right now because I tried turning it on last night. And granted, I just moved into this apartment like less than two days ago. So I turned it on for the first time and it started smelling really odd. And then it started smoking. And apparently that's normal just because they like deep cleaned it before I moved in, but I'm still really afraid to turn it on. So we're gonna use that as an excuse to play around with this air fryer. Um, so it kind of like opens up. So I assume I'll just put the chicken right in there and then I'll 
uh, I guess I'll click like air fry. I know you can't, oh, I guess you can kind of see it. it. has all these different options. So I don't know, maybe I'll play around with it. I'm not sure, I'll probably do, maybe we'll try air fryer. I'm not quite sure, but I will show you guys what it looks like. All right, round one, I just used one of the chicken breasts I have, put it in here. I think I'm gonna experiment with trying a bunch of these different features. So going to first try the air fryer feature. So I have no idea how to even start this. I don't even know where to begin. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's kind of cool. So it has like a timer, temperature. Okay, so I guess I gotta figure out. Okay, I see. So this is the air fryer mode. So, okay, I'm gonna try the air fryer mode out first and I will keep you guys updated. Stay tuned. All right, so it has been about 15 minutes I'm gonna open this up and I believe it looks ready. So I'm gonna take it out, cut into it and see if it is truly done in fact, but this was air frying. So this was the air fryer feature for my chicken. Um, I'm gonna put another breast in and then I'm gonna try one of these other ways. I'll probably try the grill um, just because I'm really curious. Ooh, or you know what? I may try the fry. I'm curious to see what the difference between air fry and the fry option is. So I'll keep you guys updated. All right, friends. So because I know you were probably on the edge of your seats waiting to see, how this chicken breast turned out. This was me using the air fry feature on the Power XL air fry grill. But anywho, as you can see, it looks really good. It looks pretty like kind of crispy on the outside, but definitely still very soft on the inside. Um, so this was using the air fry feature. So now I'm gonna take the remaining two breasts I have over here and I am going to put it back, put them in here, but I'm gonna try out a new feature. So if you can see those letters, I think I'm gonna try out the fry version. Um, I'm actually really curious to see what the fry version does as compared to the air fried version. Um, but I'm also kind of tempted to try out the grill option. So I don't know, we're gonna just kind of wing it here, but I'll let you guys know which one I choose. All right, moment of truth. This is what the second round turned out like. Um, I actually chose the grill option for this. So if you look at them, they kind of, ooh, it's hot. They look very similar to the air fried version. You can even hear them sizzling. But just a little bit more like crispier on the outside almost. All right, those of you who have watched my previous video know that I enjoy this combination and I love it. This looks a little odd, but believe me, it is mighty tasty. Um, the flavors actually pair really well. So I took that chicken I showed you guys in the last clip and I kind of tore it apart. Um, so we have chicken here and then I actually have on top the almond butter. So that is chicken with some almond butter, and then I usually put some additional um, pink sea salt on it. Believe me, you guys, it's like a sweet and a savory combination. It's really good. So I'll either do this with chicken, this is one of my favorites, or I'll do reduced sugar ketchup on my chicken because that is also a bomb way to take your chicken from tasting somewhat bland to pretty flavorful. All right, what's up, friends? So we were at a point in the video where I just wanted to sit down and just shed some light on um, a topic and I guess a question that I get a lot. Um, and it's just like, people ask me a lot to talk about how do you make it through the tough days like when hunger is super high? Um, how do you manage hunger while being in a diet or you know being in a contest prep? And I wanted to sit down and talk about that a little bit um, because personally I had a day yesterday where I was just like a freaking bottomless pit. I felt like I like nothing I ate satisfied me and I just felt like I could have eaten like my whole pantry or my like in a matter of two minutes um, but I wanted to sit down and talk about you know how to manage hunger um, how to even manage cravings um, and when you're in a dieting phase so I'm not talking to somebody who's a competitor here or I, I am I'm not but I'm not just talking to the competitor here I'm talking to anybody who's ever been in a dieting phase whether you're prepping for a show or whether you're just doing a lifestyle diet. Um, I want to kind of talk about how I personally, you know, get through those days. And first and foremost, I think it's important to to recognize and, um, and realize that hunger during a dieting phase is completely normal. In fact, you're gonna feel it at some point. You know, if you give up every time you're hungry, well, guess what? That's not gonna get you too far. Um, you know, one thing that I've realized in prep, for me in particular, is that I have very high days and very low days. And when I say low days, I'll have days where I'm like 
super, super hungry and I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I'll have another day where I'm like, you know what? I'm totally fine. Not that hungry, just normal hunger cues. So that's one thing I have noticed about this prep is I have very, very like quote unquote easy days with my with managing my hunger and then the complete opposite. Like there's no in between, it's kind of weird. Um, but anyways, so I would say the biggest tip I would give somebody in a dieting phase for managing hunger well, we'll, we'll give up. We'll, we'll talk about a couple things, but I would say the first thing is stay busy. Um, you know, I find that the days I don't have a lot to do and maybe I'm just sitting around my apartment. Um, I find that all I'm thinking about is food, right? And I think that when that's the only thing you have to think about, it's going to consume your mind. It's going to make you think you're hungrier. So stay busy. You know, I cannot tell you how many days I've had where I'm just super busy, whether, you know, I'm at the Pro Physique studio, uh, you know, doing lots of client check-ins, having a lot of client calls, or whether I'm doing a rain energy demo and I'm on my feet all day. You know, when I stay busy, I find that I don't think about food as much. Therefore, I find that hunger isn't as big of an issue. So that would be my first tip. And you know, I know sometimes in a dieting phase, sometimes in a prep, you don't always want to be around people because it consumes your energy and can take, you know, be kind of a lot, right? When you're already low energy to begin with, but also it doesn't hurt to be with somebody, you know, and meet a friend for coffee or meet up with a friend. You know, sometimes that will distract you as well and, you know, distract you from your hunger. Um, so that's the first thing. Second thing, you know, pretty common sense, but space out your protein throughout the day. Um, and also, you know, listen to your hunger cues. If you know that you're naturally a person that gets hungrier, uh, you know, at the nighttime, maybe save a little bit of extra macros for the nighttime. I'm not saying save all your macros for the nighttime, but maybe save a big chunk of, or not a big, but a relatively larger chunk of macros for that time of day. If you know, hey, that's a time of day I get super hungry, well, make sure you have enough macros to work with around that time. Space out protein throughout the day. That helps a ton. Um, another thing is stay hydrated. So drink your water. A lot of times we think we're hungry and it actually just means we're thirsty. Not all the time, but a lot of times. Um, so drink your water and not only water, but don't be afraid to, you know, utilize a diet soda or a sparkling water or Powerade Zero or, you know, Crystal Light to put in your water. I love drinking decaf coffee you know, utilize liquids because they will fill you up and, you know, keep you from feeling as like irritated when it comes to your hunger. Um, so those are like the biggest key points. Again, I, you know, going back to what I said about spacing out your, your macros throughout the day, like if you know you have a time of day that you're most hungry, try and allocate a good fraction of your macros around that time. For me, I get super hungry at night, but I also train later in the day. So I can afford to have a little bit more food later in the day. Now I would say if you're training at 6 a.m. in the morning, but you, you know, get really hungry later at night, like, you know, still allocate a good amount of your macros later in the day, but also do always prioritize the, um, food you are getting in around your workout window. Um, so those are kind of my little like tips, I guess I would give for um, staying on, tr or not staying on track, well yeah, staying on track, but also just for managing hunger. Um, but you know what, like I said, first and foremost, recognize that hunger is gonna be a thing. Whether you're a competitor, whether you're just dieting for a lifestyle cut, obviously as a competitor, you know, hunger is gonna probably be a bit more, um, a bit more prevalent. Um, but there are ways, you know, to to help make it a little bit less um, less awful. And at the end of the day, I'll leave you guys with this. Remember that dieting is a privilege. You know, I don't think anybody's holding up a knife to your head saying you have to diet. So remember, dieting is a privilege. You know, you're choosing to do this for yourself. It's not like somebody's forcing you to do it. So embrace it and just take it day by day and always look for the positives. And I always say the toughest days are only going to make you tougher. Like my day yesterday where I felt awful made today seem amazing. Even though today was just a normal day, it made today seem so much better. So I'm gonna end this clip here. I will catch you guys in the next clip and I hope you're enjoying the video so far. All right, y'all, I am ending the night the only way there is to end the night. And that is with a big thing of protein fluff. It is so creamy. And what I actually did is, for those of you who don't know my protein fluff recipe, I put it in, um, a video or two ago, but basically it's just PD Science protein, ice, water, and I put about, oh, I have it on my hand even. Um, I put about a half a banana in there, and then I actually even added some of this skinny syrup, the cookie dough flavor, into it tonight. Just like a little bit, of, just a little dash, just to add a little bit more sweetness, and it kind of tastes like cookie dough like. But ending the night on this note, I'm gonna take a nice warm bubble bath. I'm gonna admire 
my gorgeous new view outside of my patio. Um, actually, fun fact about this area is this is where the cruise ships come in. Um, but ever since COVID happened, we haven't really had any cruise ships, so it's kind of just been a lonely little river with some cargo shifts. But anywho, I'm going to end the video on this note. Thank you guys for watching. Please like this video, subscribe, share it with a friend if you truly enjoyed it. It means a lot to me, but I will catch you guys in the next video and have an awesome rest of the day.